Hello, English Journal readers. Welcome to the November edition of Ask Kimberly. This month, our question is this. What is the definition of success for women? I wanted to live a life like my mother did and always thought I would until recently. But now I'm over 40, single, and have no kids. Am I a loser or what? This is the question I'm presented with this week. There's certainly nothing wrong with wanting to grow up to be like your mother. But keep in mind that she lived the life that you were admiring in the last century. I mean, she got married long before there was Google. And her telephone, it was connected to the wall by a cord. Do you really want to live your life and judge your success today based on norms created in the last century? I don't think so. First, let's talk about who's defining your success. I know many people who've gotten married after the age of 40. If you want to, you can do that. And through the miracle of science, they managed to have children even when they were almost 50 years old. But before you run out and join a dating site, Please take time to redefine success in your own terms. One very successful businesswoman from the Silicon Valley said, When I was 20, I worried about what other people thought about me. When I was 40, I didn't care what other people thought about me. And when I was 60, I realized that other people weren't thinking about me. Maybe we worry too much about what other people think about us. As I grow older, I too realize that my own definition of success matters more than how other people judge me. Beware of being pressured to conform to other people's notion of what your life should be, to their idea of success. Success is relative. My mother often told me there's always someone worse than you and always someone better than you. So don't compare yourself to other people. Just be the best you that you can be. Great advice. Unfortunately, human brains value status. Neuroscience has taught us this and we like to compare ourselves to other people. But when we compare ourselves to other people, we feel inferior because we don't see all of the complicated details of their lives and the painful parts of their lives, the things that are stressing them out. All we see is the successful front that they present to the world. So you might feel unsuccessful because you don't have a husband and don't have children until you find out your girlfriend is divorcing her jerk husband or your neighbor's two grown children 30 years old or still living with them, then you might not be so eager to get into that situation. Making different choices doesn't make you a loser. I love kids, but I didn't have any. It was a choice. It doesn't make me a loser. A choice isn't the same thing as being a loser. You might claim that you haven't chosen your life. Someone else somehow forced you into this life, but I guarantee you that's nonsense. Every one of us has made many choices that has shaped our lives. And I think we need to recognize that and start making better choices. For example, what you want, is it aligned with what you do? How are you spending your time? If you really want to get married, you can't work 80 hours a week unless you plan to marry a coworker. So look at how you're spending your time and how it's aligned with your choices for what you want in your life. And if it's not aligned, make some changes to your choices or to your definition of success. My best advice is redefine success as happiness. A lot of research has been done on happiness lately. Human beings are really bad at predicting what will make us happy. You're not a loser. Life's messy. Things happen. If you want to compare yourself to somebody, 
Compare yourself to the one billion people living on planet Earth that don't have access to clean drinking water. This morning, I showered in water clean enough to drink. If you compare yourself to people like that, you're going to feel wildly successful and extremely fortunate. Celebrate being who you are and don't let other people define success for you.